What's up, everyone? In this one, my brother and I are attempting to construct a mobile chicken coop, and we've designed it to try to handle a northern winter, so we'll see how that goes. So let's get into it. First thing we did was clear space and frame out a box for the foundation of the coop. All the boards that we're using for this are from ash trees that we felled and milled from our own land. So these boards are a true two by fours, probably a little bit wider than that. They weren't planed or anything like that, so they're a little rough around the edges and that caused some problems during the construction, but it's not too big of a deal. The biggest issue with it is that ash is extremely heavy. These boards were a lot heavier than like the pine two by fours we had on hand that we compared them to. So that's gonna add a lot of weight to what's supposed to be like a lightweight mobile design but we still made it work. So the dimensions for this coop are four by six feet and I got the bottom all framed out. I ran some supports down the middle and I put the top four by six box together. We connected the vertical supports onto the bottom. I made sure they were plumb when we put them in and then attached the top to it. So this gives us the frame of the coop and the next step is attaching the wheels. I'll have a material list in the description of this video if you're interested and I'll put links to where I picked up everything that I used in this build. So hopefully that can help you out if you're looking to build something similar for yourself. For the wheels, we drilled holes through the boards and threaded the rod through and used nuts and washers to hold the axle in place and attach the wheel. We like doing our wheels this way. A lot of the other plans for mobile coops have you putting the axle on the bottom and attaching it to the coop that way. That would get you off the ground a little bit more, but we think this is a little bit more sturdy and we don't really need that much clearance off the ground. Go check it out. We really like how this turned out and we're gonna do the same exact technique on the next mobile coops that we're gonna be building in the future. That's so cool. 16. We measured, cut, and attached some boards on the front of the coop to level it out. And then once those were in place, it's on to framing out the roof. So we're going with a pitched style roof on this mobile coop and this is what I'm talking about when I say this is built for northern winters. Uh, we built this roof to give them more space inside the coop and this is where we're going to put the roosts inside this roof that goes on top. Most chicken coop designs that I've seen don't really have a roof like this and there's pros and cons with everything. Pros of our roof style is it gives them more space and snow is going to shed off this in theory and that should make it a lot easier to handle chickens over the winter. Some cons for the style are the roof's not on hinges or anything so you can't just open it up and access the coop from up top and it's going to take a lot more lumber and time most likely to construct this as opposed to some other mobile coop uh, roof designs. But for what we're looking for out of this coop, the pitched roof just made a lot more sense for us. And so far, I'm very happy with how it turned out. And the next thing we're doing is some bracing and doing the roosts. Now that that's all done, it's time for the nesting boxes. We ripped some boards down to two by twos and 
We just did a simple box design like this. And use some plywood to cover it up. And we cut these angles into plywood like this because we wanted about half of it to be on the inside and half of it to be on the outside. So A, it gives them more space and B, it's easy for me to access this. I don't have to pull out a crate or something like that. I can just lift up the cover that we're gonna put on it and reach in and grab the eggs or chickens or whatever I need to get. 15 3 eighths. We got everything trimmed out, put a cover on top of it, and that is good to go. And on the other side of the coop is where we're putting the door. The nesting boxes are gonna be by the railing that we're gonna be put on here to pull it around. And the other side of the coop is gonna be where the door for the chickens is gonna go. The reason we put the door on this side, cause I've seen that most coop designs have it on the other side, because in the winter, we're gonna back this coop up into our greenhouse to give them a place to hang out during the winter and give them some compost to go through, some food scraps, things like that. So I wanted it on the opposite side of where my handles are gonna be so I can just wheel it up to wherever I need to put it and completely back it into the greenhouse or wherever they're going. And now that the door's in place, the handles are the next step. So we got that framed out. We left a little bit of an overhang on the bottom boards of the foundation of the coop to attach some boards for handles. And we made this X shape. And we're gonna run a board on the front of the X's for the actual bar that I'm gonna hold onto when I'm moving this thing around. Uh, but now that all the wood's in place, I stained everything with an outdoor defense oil from Real Milk Paint Company. So it's tongue oil and zinc, and I think there was something else in it. But hopefully this can help the wood last a little bit longer. I know ash has a higher rot rate compared to a lot of other hardwoods especially. So we want to get some tongue oil on it, let it sit for a few days, and hopefully this gives us some more years out of this coop. I also painted the nesting boxes white. This was from Real Milk Paint as well. And we put some outdoor additive into the paint. So hopefully that helps the plywood last a little bit longer as well. But once that dried for a few days, we started putting the wire on the bottom. I use one by one welded wire and we started putting the aluminum panels on the roof. We always use screws and fender washers to secure wire like this instead of staples like we normally see people use because we've always had bad experiences with staples and these fender washers will last a very long time. I don't want to be coming back through in a few years and having to redo all the staples or put them back in or have a hole in there where a predator can get in. These washers and screws alleviate a lot of those worries. Finished up by putting welded wire and some aluminum panels on the rest of the coop, getting everything secured, made sure that no predators are getting in there. And after that, we used cedar to go back through and trim up any of the gaps. And we used some scrap cedar that we had sitting in the woods for the past year or so for our ridge cap. We fastened the boards into 90 degree angles and laid them on top and connected them. So far, it seems to be working really well. 
once that ridge cap was in place, we ripped some more of the cedar scrap that we had and went through and covered the rest of the gaps in the back, like where some panels come together, gaps on where the panels meet the wood, things like that. We wanted to cover up any holes to where predators can get in and make it look better. After that, the only step that's left is attaching the actual handles that I'm gonna be pulling the coop with. And we use some cedar boards that we have because we have a lot of it and we don't wanna tongue it at this point. So we just use something that's not gonna rot. And we got it measured out and I figured out where my hand position is gonna be when I'm moving this. And my brother sanded those areas down and kind of made some handles for me to hold on to. And I tested it out and this thing works really well. It's actually a lot more mobile than I was expecting it to be with how heavy the ash boards turned out to be. But so far, I've only tried it on a flat concrete slab. So now it's time for the real test. Let's see how it handles the outdoor ground conditions. It's pretty muddy right now and I have to get it up a pretty big hill to get it into its final resting place. So there you have it, a fairly mobile chicken coop built for northern winters. I'm so happy to have this thing for my chickens now. I'm gonna have them right next to the compost area, right next to the barn, makes everything a lot easier. And I can move them if I need to, to a different area.